Okay. Now we're going to do question two. Question two is similar, but what is the moral of the story here? In the short run, you can have a, a profit, right? A, a handsome profit, a handsome economic profit. And if you uh, tell everybody that you're making a handsome profit by living in a brand new house, massive brand new house with a Lamborghini in the driveway, people are going to ask questions. Well, how, did, how does that person get the kind of wealth to be able to afford that house and that Lamborghini. Well, then they follow you around and they see that you own a restaurant. That restaurant must be producing above normal economic profits. So a person willing to take risk and roll the dice will enter the market. And that does what? It lowers the price, right? It lowers the price. So, Competition leads to lower prices, more output, and reduces economic profit to zero, right? That's the moral of the story. So what to do, right? What can you do? Well, you may decide to monopolize the market, and that's the focus of the next question. It, a perfect competition leads to this idea that um, um, these individual firms, they can either work together as one firm, collude, or they can, or just monopolize the market. In other words, in question one, maybe there's consolidation. Maybe the 12 or 13 restaurants Maybe a few of the restaurants are purchased by a couple people and you end up with five major players, right? Okay, in this problem, um, we have forecasted demand to be in this, right? So I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna reuse my Desmos model, reuse it. Let me grab the supply curve. And delete everything else. Okay, and then I'll stretch it, right? I'll stretch this. I want to see more of the demand and supply curve, right? Um, I'm going to change the maximum height of Y to 50. Maybe I can do 40. There, there we go. All right, so I got my demand and my supply curve, right? Now, the intersection of demand and supply, um, this market is supplying 350 pizzas, which is given to you right here, right? And at a, a clearing price of 21.6, which is given to you as well, right? Now, I'm going to graph my price, my market price, typing y equal 21.6 i'm going to edit this line i'm going to change it to dashed line and change that to one okay so at this market price of 2160 this upper triangle here that goes from the demand curve down to the market price of 2160, that is your consumer surplus. And this lower triangle here is your firm surplus. And notice the firm surplus is bigger, right? The firm surplus is that value. That value is the area of the lower triangle. Divide this lower triangle down here. Yep. The consumer surplus is the value of this upper triangle. And it comes from this idea that the very first pizza that is sold, the firm is willing to accept a very low price for it, 60 cents, right? 
they're willing to supply that first pizza for about 60 cents. That first buyer is willing to pay up to 35, 60 for that first pizza, right? So the, the highball by the consumer is 35, 35, 60, right? The most the consumer will is willing to pay for that first pizza, 35, 60. The least the firm will supply that pizza at, it's about 60 cents, right? And somewhere in the middle is the market price. So this vertical line is the consumer surplus of the first pizza sold. And this vertical line here from the equilibrium price down to the supply curve, that is the firm surplus of the first pizza sold, right? So this is firm surplus and this is consumer surplus. And together they're $6,125. Okay. Now, if there are there are four firms competing against firm M, which means there's five total firms, right? M, and then the four other firms makes five, right? These firms are identical. They split the market equally with each supplying what? Well, the market quantity is 350, right? 350. And we have five firms in here, firm M and four others, five firms. So each firm is supplying 70 pizzas at a market price of 2176 or 2160, right? I'm going to hit enter here. Yep. Now I can buy my pizza at firm one at 2160, or I can buy it from firm M. At 2160, right? So the most I'm willing to pay from an individual store is 2160. If store M wants to price its pizza at 25, I'm not willing to pay 25 because I can go to firm one, two, three, or four and pay 2160. So for this reason, each of the five firms is a price taker. A price taker. It takes the prices given. And it faces a perfectly elastic demand curve at 2160, right? And when I enter 2160 there, notice I get the dashed line at the equilibrium, right? I also get the height of uh, this perfectly elastic demand curve for one of the five firms. So remember, there's, there's five copies of this, right, of this diagram here. This is the perfectly elastic demand curve that firm one is faced with. It's the perfect elastic demand curve that firm two is faced with. It's the perfectly elastic demand curve that firm three is faced with. Firm four is faced with. Firm M is faced with, right? Again, why is it perfectly elastic? Because I know that I can get a pizza for 2160 at a different restaurant. So the most I'm willing to pay at one of the restaurants is 2160, right? So that makes the demand curve that each firm is faced with perfectly elastic. Now, since the market supply curve is the horizontal sum of the marginal cost graphs of the five firms, and these firms equally split the market, right? So in the previous example, we had like 12 times Q. Here, there's only five firms, right? So we got five times Q, right? We got five times Q here. The little Q is each of the firms. So this axis here is little Q, and this axis here is big Q, right? Because this is the market. And this is firm one's, um, this is for firm one, or it's for firm two, or it's for firm three, or it's for firm four, or it's for firm M, right? So I'm just replacing big Q with what it equals, 5Q. This is the market supply curve or the aggregate marginal cost curve. And this is the individual firm supply curve or the individual firm's marginal cost curves, right? 
So the slope here is 0 0.6. I'm just replacing the P with the MC, right? Now I got the slope. The slope is 0 0.06 times 5, right? 0 0.06 times 5, which is 0 0.3, right? And so now this right here is firm one's marginal cost curve or firm two's marginal cost curve or firm three's marginal cost curve or firm four's marginal cost curve or firm M's marginal cost curve, right? And this quantity here is 70. And 70 times five is 350, right? Under perfect competition, the firm's revenue equals its quantity supplied times the given price. The market price is twenty-one sixty. Each individual firm has no control over that, right? So I just replace price with twenty-one sixty, and this is a linear equation with zero intercept and a slope of twenty-one point six. Marginal revenue is the slope of revenue, right? Twenty-one sixty. Okay, so this flat line here is marginal revenue. This vertical line here is marginal, this uh, upper sloping line is marginal cost, right? Now, firms are, firm profits are maximized where each firm supplies the quantity that increases marginal cost to just equal marginal revenue. So we're gonna set the two equal and then find the quantity, right? This right here, again, is the marginal cost curve, right, up here that we derived. And the thing in the box is the marginal revenue, the market price, 21.60. If you solve this equation for Q, <clears throat> which involves uh, subtracting 2160, 0 0.6 from 2160, right, which is 21, and then divide them by 0.3, which is 70, right? And that's the same value that we had up here. Same value that we had up here, it's 70. In other words, where, where do these, the red line and the green line intersect? They intersect at 70, right? Okay. Now, suppose the FTC permits one of the five firms in this market, firm M, I, I say firm M because it's a monopolist, it ends up being the monopolist, to purchase its four competitors. Now, firm M's resulting revenue, firm M now is the market, right? Firm M can now restrict quantity. Firm M can restrict quantity. So firm, if firm M restricts quantity to 200 pizzas, it could push the price up to 2760, right? If it reduces quantity to 100, it can push the price of pizza up to 31.6, right? So because firm M now is the entire market, and if it's been able to successfully estimate demand, then it knows that it can restrict output to drive the prices up, right? Demand curve. So no longer is it a is it a price taker. Now it's a price maker. And as, as a result, because firm M is the market, its quantity is the big Q, not the little Q. It's the big Q, right? It still has five restaurants, but it's the owner of the five restaurants, right? It's the owner of these five little Qs, right? So its revenue is the big Q, right? And the price, we're gonna replace the price with what the price equals on the demand curve, right? And the resulting equation is a parabola that rises and falls. Now, if you've had calculus before, this would be easy. But if you haven't, um, well, I'm gonna walk you through it, right? We're gonna differentiate this with respect to Q, right? When we do that, 
when we differentiate this part with respect to cube, this right here becomes one. And so the intercept of marginal revenue is 35.6. Yep. When you differentiate this part with respect to Q, you take the old exponent too and you multiply it by the um, old slope, 0 0.04. And that would be 0 0.08, right? Then the old, the old exponent, you subtract one from it. Two minus one is one. So Q raised to the first power is Q, right? So the marginal revenue equation, if demand is linear, the marginal revenue equation is gonna have the same intercept as the demand curve, but its slope is gonna be twice as steep twice as big as a slope of demand, right? So right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna add my marginal revenue curve. My re marginal revenue curve has the same intercept, but it's twice as steep. And I wanna turn it red. I'm gonna change this to red to match what's going on in uh, my math. Okay, so now when I hit enter here, notice that I get a new equation. Red line is the marginal revenue. This graph looks identical to this graph, right? All right. Now, um, since the market supply curve is the firm's mar uh, monopolist, is the monopolist marginal cost curve, Firm M's economic profits are maximized when marginal revenue intersects the market supply curve, the monopolist marginal cost, right here, right? The black upward sloping line is the marginal cost of the monopolist, also known as the supply curve. The red line is the firm, the monopolist marginal revenue, right? And where those two intersect, quantity is 250. So the monopolist has restricted output to 250 units, right? It's restricted output to 250 units here. Lowering output to this level allows the monopolist to push the price of pizza up the demand curve, right? From 2160, to 2560, right? $25.60. See what happens here? My alpha math draws a line through the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost, and then it extends it up to the demand curve to a height equal to the monopolist price that they're going to charge right which is 2560 for this reason the monopolist is known as a price maker now this right here this little triangle here that is made by the demand curve down to this dashed line that little triangle is the consumer surplus and this trapezoid made by the upward sloping supply curve and these dashed lines, it looks like the state of Nevada, right? That is a firm surplus. Firm surplus was 3,675. Firm surplus now is more, right? So firm surplus increased, right? Consumer surplus fell. Consumer surplus is this tiny little triangle up here, right? Tiny little triangle up here. So in this graph, it'd be this little triangle up here, right? Consumer surplus was this bigger triangle down to the market supply curve, right? Or down here to, from this point, left 
is the original consumer surplus, right? That's smaller than the new consumer surplus, which is why numerically it fell. So total surplus uh, declined from 6,125 to 5,625. Right. Now to achieve the above monopoly outcome, firm M will do what? Which of these choices will firm M do? Sells newly acquired franchise to highest bidder? Well, if it does that, if it sells one of its five stores, well, that fifth store is going to be operated independently. Right. And so the four firms that re remain in the monopoly, those four firms, those four restaurants will compete with the one independent restaurant. And that's going to push prices back down to the equilibrium. Right. So it's not going to do that. It's not going to keep all this newly acquired factories or restaurants and decrease its price. Right. It's not going to do that because then it'll be down here and it won't be maximizing profits. Um, shut down some of its of the factories it purchased to reduce its output. That sounds right, right? Shut down some of its factories it purchased to reduce its price. It's not going to shut down and lower the price, right? It's going to shut down some of the new restaurants, some of the restaurants it purchased to reduce its output. That's the best choice, right? Characterize the factories that were shuttered by Firm M. Well, <clears throat> to think about this, output was originally what per total output was what? 350. And each firm operating individually produced 70 pizzas in, uh, an hour, right? After the monopolization, total output fell to 250, right? If it keeps the five stores open, each store is going to produce 50 pizzas. But if it closes one of those restaurants, if it closes it, then the four remaining restaurants, they'll produce on average 62 and a half pizzas per hour, right? So that's probably what's going on here, right? It closes one of the restaurants. So the decrease in supply from here to here, that line segment, you can think of that as the fifth restaurant being closed. Now, the marginal cost of that fifth, fifth restaurant is 2160. The marginal cost of the fourth restaurant is 15.6. So the, the restaurant that was closed has higher marginal cost. And you're probably gonna see that with the oldest of the five restaurants in probably an inner city neighborhood where there might be high crime, um, maybe um, older building, uh, not as um, efficient as the four brand new restaurants um, out in the suburbs, right? So the marginal restaurant that the firm um, purchased is probably an inner city uh, pizza restaurant, right? So it closes that one because it's too high a cost. Maybe the crime's too high, right? So what does that mean? Well, for people in the inner city, they have less economic opportunity. There's fewer places where they can work, right? And then the monopolist charges a price now of 25.6. At the market price, initially, the price is 2160. 
Well, raising the price prices the people on the demand curve that populate the demand curve between these two points, it prices them out of the market. People who can buy pay twenty one sixty, but can't pay twenty five sixty, they're probably lower income, middle income consumers, right? They're priced out. So, the monopolist eliminates selling, eliminates the commerce that it once had with middle income consumers. They're priced out of the market, right? And where they generally live, maybe in the inner city, right? So <clears throat> the stores that are in the suburbs, they're really unaffected by this. The people in the suburbs are really unaffected by this, right? They do have to pay a higher price, but they're willing to pay that higher price because they have the ability to do so, right? We lose the commerce. We lose the commerce with people in the inner city. We lose the commerce of that fifth restaurant that was shuttered in the inner city. And so you see the inner city with boarded up windows and high rates of poverty. That loss in commerce is called deadweight loss. Right? And that loss in commerce is the difference in the surplus that prevailed under a market, under a perfectly competitive market, minus the total surplus that prevails under monopoly. So the value of that lost commerce in the form of a reduction in total surplus is $500 in my model. Since the high pizza price generates an above normal profit margin for the monopolist. Now, hope's not all lost, right? The monopolist wanted to monopolize this market because economic profits were zero. But now the, the marginal cost is 15.6. The price that this monopolist is getting per pizza is 25.6. Those are that's a healthy margin, right? So now the monopolist is driving around in a customized Lamborghini. What does that do? That invites competition. An entrepreneur is going to see this guy running five uh, four restaurants because he shuttered one. He's going to see that this guy running uh, uh, operating four restaurants is making above normal economic profit and is going to want to enter the market, right? It invites entrepreneurs to roll the dice and enter the firm, firm M's market. So firm M knows this. The owner, the monopolist knows this. The monopolist has money. The monopolist uses this money to lobby local government or the federal government to protect its uh, monopoly from competition by erecting licensing and other regulations. 